Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to another Yale Appliance webinar. I'm Pat Palingo. With me today is Steve Scheinkoff, our CEO, and Francesco Froyo, our general manager. Uh, today, we're going to be diving into uh, red flags. Don't buy these appliances in 2024. Uh, really popular presentation. Um, and without any further ado, I'll turn it over to Steve to take over. Thank you, Pat. Pat, this is like your 24th year at Yale. This is my 38th year. Um, 38 years of appliances, hard to believe. Anyway, um, I had this presentation done a couple of weeks ago, and then I completely redid it on Monday uh, due to some stuff that's happened last week and a couple of weeks ago. And, and I say this because uh, um, if you're planning a kitchen or buying appliances, you've never been in more peril. I hate using that word. You've never had more of a chance to get things wrong than you do at any time I've ever been here. I know I said that during the supply chain issues, but it's kind of gotten worse. So here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the worst ideas to do and the worst products to buy first. And then mild yet annoying things that once you have them, you wish you didn't. And then we're going to go back to like some products and ideas that, that really you shouldn't get yourself into. So let's just start. Anyway, let's start with this kitchen. What do you think? A designer designed this kitchen. You can tell by the lights. Those are visual comfort lights. Designers love those, love that company. You're looking at a Sub-Zero 48 inch refrigerator, Wolf 36 inch professional cooktop. Figure with the wall of and everything, you're looking at about $35,000 of appliances. Just take a look. More visual comfort lights. I, I didn't intend on them when I built the, uh, the, the webinar. Take a look. I kind of like the way that, you know, it's white off shaded, really nice. Um, and then you've got this, it's almost like an Arctic architect said, hey, build me a drawing table for my peninsula. But each one of these has problems enough where you probably have a meeting with the architect and designer after it's done saying this doesn't work. And that's what we want to prevent here. So I've got a quick question. How many people cook today or even last night? It doesn't have to be stir fry, anything on the on the countertop. Because if you did, this is what you really did, right? You uh, uh, and and whether it's gas or induction or electric, when you burn fat, a certain amount of compounds get produced and emitted into the air: carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, nitrogen dioxide. Particular amount. I'm not trying to scare you. My mom had a caloric range. It was an old uh, high low. We don't sell them anymore. I haven't sold them in 20 years. I don't remember her turning the hood on, but um, her caloric range had like an 8,000, maybe a 6,000 BTU in the front where everybody cooks, right? The basic ranges that you can buy today to the better ranges will have on the front a 17 and a 19,000 BTU. Whirlpool at its most basic range has got two 15,000 BTU burners. So we're now cooking to almost two to three times what our parents did years ago. And what makes this really, what makes this a problem is now with new building material, it's designed to keep air out and air in. So it's much cheaper to warm a house now because the windows actually keep the air in or out, depending. But all this stuff stays in your house longer. Now, you know, you read reports of, you know, indoor pollution being, you know, the inside of your house is two to seven times more polluted than the outside of your house, which is pretty amazing. So what we want to do in this first part is prevent that from happening. And now I live, I used to live, I grew up in Needham, which is a suburb of Boston. And my, my daughter goes to school in Needham and my friends are Needham based. So we always go to, you know, the, the, the Fuji Steakhouse. It's, it's got eight of these hibachis on it. You probably know hibachi like a Benihana or something. And, and one thing that strikes me is it never smells bad in there. You know, there's never clouds of smoke. It's always s smells clean, like a, like a restaurant should. And it's pretty amazing when you think about it, right? But what you need to do is you look at these, these people that cook and entertain cook for a living and what they do and the place doesn't smell. And, and you wonder why, and it's one reason really, is they've overhead hoods. Not just any overhead hoods. Now I'm not, I'm not telling you to get a commercial hood for your house. You don't need that. But an overhead hood that, that goes over the, the whole hibachi, 
That's why the place doesn't smell. So if, if we're going to say this is the right way to vent, to make sure that your house is clean, that you don't have to worry about smoke and grease in your all white kitchen, then we can't be doing this. Right? Number one product, and it's always been a problem, is downdrafts, right? The thing about this is smoke is captured. It's not like immediately sent out and it goes with gravity up with, with a motor. Now, when you downdraft something, you have no, you have no capture area like in the, in the previous page. It's, it's sending smoke down when smoke rises. And then you're transitioning out, leaving it in your basement on your first floor. You're transitioning out. Every time you transition duct, it reduces the static flow and you get a longer ducting run. So everything that's bad about ventilation is incorporated into a downdraft. And, and people are putting these, like you see the same 36 inch wolf cooktop. That's probably 90,000, 90, 95,000 BTUs. It's not going to fit through a four inch plenum. So downdrafts are one of the things that you want to stay away from, especially if you cook, right? I would say the same about over the range microwaves. Over the range microwaves, and we sell a lot of them. You can put an over the range microwave anywhere. I mean, I'm sorry, you can put a microwave anywhere. You can put a microwave under a cabinet, through a cabinet, in a microwave drawer. You can put it on your stovetop, but it shouldn't be over the range. Now, we do sell them, but by the time they get to us, it's too late and it's better than nothing. That shouldn't be the standard by which you build your new kitchen or buy appliances, right? Over the range microwaves are 16 inches deep. The two front burners that you're going to be cooking on are at 23 inches deep. So that just won't work. Plus, over the range microwaves are under power to 350 CFM. So that's another product to stay away from, right? Along with shallow hoods. Most of these decorative European types are 18 to 21 inches, right? And they tend to be a little bit underpowered as well. So at 18, 21 inches, doesn't cover the burner at 23. So that's another thing to be aware of. And lastly, ceiling blowers. Um, when I was, I lived in Cambridge in the 90s and they put a really a big bath blower over a stove. I thought it was pretty interesting at the time. It's 410 CFM. We used to sell them with new tones. And as attractive as an idea as it was, everything around it was greasy. Now, these ceiling blowers are a lot more elaborate. You know, they're 1,000, 1,500 CFM. However, most people install them wrong. You got to be very careful when you install one of these. It, said, it says clearly in the instructions, seven, eight feet off the cooking surface. If you go higher than that, smoke is going to naturally somewhat dissipate and stay in your house. So just be mindful of that, right? Now, for a lot of people, it's about overlooking windows. The simplest and best kitchen hack, the one that I've used in every, I've renovated two places and it's the one that I've used, is putting the sink in the island. Put the sink, there's three appliances you need to worry about. If I was to put chalk on your feet so you can see where you walk in your kitchen, it's your sink, your stove top, you know, it's a very active appliance. You got to keep stirring or saucing or sauteing. Um, and then your dishwasher. You don't need to have your wall oven, your refrigerators close by because you don't, it's not mission critical to be in your refrigerator. It's not mission critical. I mean, you, you put the turkey in the stove, or I put my stuff in a steam oven instead of for 10 minutes, I don't look at it again. You're not actively stirring something. And you can always put, you know, ancillary refrigerators or, or, or uh, microwaves closer to where the sink is as well in an island. But if you're designing a kitchen, sink goes in the island, just not like this, right? You, when you're moving with hot food, you don't want to have to move around or over or something. You know, in this picture, what they should do is put the sink, you know, in the island and maybe have a bar sink on the other side. Okay, let's get into mildly annoying problems. This is this is brown. It keeps coming up. Tuscan bronze. My grandfather sold it as toast or coffee. You know, we've had an oil rub bronze. We've had it in Mila truffle and any number of bisque and any type of things. The problem is that the brown doesn't match anything. Right? Not even brown cabinets. So it's not a finish you want to put in. But the finish you really don't want to put in, and that's you know personal style. But it just this is a frequently discontinued color. But what you want to stay away from is black stainless steel. See, I'm not saying black. That'll come up later. Black stainless steel. It's just an oxide coating over stainless. So what happens is that becomes a breach in its streets. You see, you see the stainless underneath it, and, all of, and, and it can't be fixed. 
and it's not warranted because it's a cosmetic issue. So black stainless is something you want to stay away from, period. Now, a lot of people had questions on custom colors and put whatever custom color you want in. And I, I think it's just nice to put a pop of color in. I mean, how many people are planning? You know, this is subway tile, white cabinets. Those poles are probably one of the three most popular that you see in, you know, in design magazines. So it's nice to put a pop of color in. But just remember, if you're going to put all color in, manufacturers get kind of finicky. You know, if, if red doesn't sell, they're going to discontinue it. So this kitchen in eight to 12 years, if you need a new fridge or something, you're not probably, you probably won't be able to match it. This is the same thing in, in orange. The trendy colors now are white in regular black, matte black, actually, and gloss black seem to be popular, which is identical to what was popular when I started here in 1986. Okay. Now, here's a few other things. If you can't hear something, it's uh, a quiet dishwasher is 44 decibels. Having something that, that you can't hear beyond that, you don't need something that's extra quiet when you can't hear at 44. Now, you can buy a meal of dishwasher at 44 decibels for 1200 bucks. You could buy their quietest dishwasher, which has more features, at 3,600. That's 38 decibels. Bosch, it's 1,000 uh, for 44 that you won't hear. Or you could pay up to 1,800 for 38 decibels. You don't need to go beyond 44. That said, there's some pretty, there's some pretty good extra, there's some pretty good quiet dishwasher in the market. You don't have to spend more than $1,000 for a quiet dishwasher. Ditto here with extra large washers. They probably won't fit anyway. But, but, you know, my mom, I'm bringing my mom up again here, 2.5, she, wa she washed in a Maytag top load. After the, if you take the volume in the agitator, it's 2.5 cubic feet. An average front loader is 4 to 4.5, 4.5 to 5 cubic feet. That's twice as much as she had. She had three kids, right? An extra large washer, six cubic feet, LG and Samsung put them out. It's a thousand dollars more basically for 0.7 to one cubic feet and Extra large washers aren't updated with really good features like auto dispensers that release around it. You know, if you read the blog, you know, release the, the right amount of detergent at the right time. So you don't have to guess. Extra large washers don't have that. Right? We label premium appliance. You're looking at the same range. I'm not picking on Whirlpool here, but you buy a Whirlpool or uh, the KitchenAid is, is got a little bit more BTU at the same price. It must be on sale. But the Gen Air and the KitchenAid, the real difference is the baking drawer underneath. I think Jan has got a couple burners that are maybe 2,000 BT more, which in the scheme of things, nothing, but you're going to pay $1,600 the same range. Now, it's not just Whirlpool, you know, GE, G Profile Cafe, very similar in some aspects. Um, LG, LG Studio, SKS, although they do a better job of of, of keeping the lines a little bit different. You know, the, the, the uh, microwave drawers everybody buys are all made by Sharp. So you want to buy the one that's that can be flush mounted, the one that's the cheapest, which right now is an SKS, which is part of LG. Okay, here's a question, obvious question. Induction ranges, Bosch 36 or LG, which one is bigger? Now, I'm not saying not to buy a 36 inch induction, but I would look at them because the average 36 inch induction range is about 3.5 to 4.5 cubic feet. Wolf is the biggest at 6.3. Average 30 inch induction range is about six cubic feet. I'd say 5.5 to six with KitchenAid, Cafe six, seven, KitchenAid with the baking drawer seven. So really what you wanna do is you wanna look at these appliances before you buy them. Uh, 30 inch dual fuel ranges. If you walk into an appliance store and you say, I want the best range you can buy, it's like going to a car dealer and the same, the same, we've got the best car for you. We got, have they got the car for you? Well, on a 30 inch dual fuel, um, people will say the speed of gas and the precise baking of, um, of electrical, except induction's faster. However, if you like to broil and roast, Gas is way better. And if you live in a remote place that has power outages, you want a gas stove because at least you can light the top, right? When you walk in an appliance store, you should say, here's what I do. Show me the best appliance for me rather than them then saying, what's the best appliance, which is why a lot of these dual fuels get sold in the first place. 
Now let's get into some bigger problems. Uh, this one's pro style ranges. If you look at pro style, now we've talked, we're going to talk about a lot of you have asked questions, Wolf, Meal, or Thermidor. Um, pro style ranges um, from brands, they, you know, you'll find, you find those ranges from five to 20,000, but you can find things that look like it for two to 10. Like you can buy a 48 inch pro looking range for $7,000 wearing Wolf or, or one of those, it's 15 to 20. But you have to understand what you're buying. Um, and this, this is a Bertazzoni. This has one 18,000 BT burner and the rest are basically summer burners. So you'll be able to cook a regular meal in one burner only. Oven capacities aren't as good. Um, broiling is almost non-existent. Most broilers when a pro ranger are, are 15 to 23,000 with infrared. These are eight to 10 regular gas burners. Um, you are going to pay less money, but again, you know, a lot of people ask me questions on these brands. I, I've never seen more brands at any time in, at, at Yale. I mean, one of these brands had a uh, recall of 30,000 ranges due to carbon monoxide poisoning. The other, the other, one of the other companies here, uh, Ilve, they're distributing one chapter seven, leaving people stranded. Um, I, I would, before I buy something I wasn't aware of, even just the regular lines is, really spend the time on reviews, user reviews, service and delivery, um, because I, I think you're gonna be surprised at what you find. Now, here's another problem that you don't need to worry about anymore. You don't have to buy like you did two years ago where you had to put a deposit down 18 months before you would get the range, before you get appliances because Wolf, Sub-Zero, Thermidor, Bosch, Mila, we're all out 12 to 18 months. That's not, that's not the case anymore. In fact, it's just the opposite. A lot of the manufacturers have overproduced for demand that's no longer there. Home goods sold 2020 to 2022 astronomically because you couldn't do anything else. Right? You couldn't vacation. So people invested in their homes. Well, now you can get pretty much anything you want. You can get a kitchen order. I wouldn't put a deposit down before nine to 120 days. I mean. Why would you get 5% on your money? But not just that, um, you don't need to. And if you do, if you if you put a deposit way in advance, a lot of times, sometimes the product can change and that can affect your cabinets as well. So here's what I would do is I would buy appliances during promotions, which would be President's Day, July 4th, Memorial Day, Labor Day, Black Friday. But even now, you're seeing manufacturers really struggle. They're going to have spring Black Friday in April. That's never been done before. So look at the promotions and plan yourself 90 to 120, not 12 to 18 months. You don't need to do that. And the other thing is you've got to be very careful where you buy. Um, if you're from Boston, Boston Appliance went out of business um, last year, leaving about five million five, people with 5 to $10 million worth of deposits on the street. And Appliance Connection, um, these are internet. Appliance Connection is an internet only dealer, and there's a lot of them. And the financial model can't, it can't exist in the long term because a lot of these guys operate on one warehouse in, say, New York somewhere, and they're shipping products all over the place. The moment you ship out of your market, which is why we don't do it, the damage rates is is upwards to twenty percent or more, and. Mm -hmm. In an appliance business, you can't, it's not sustainable. So they're one, there'll be many. But either way, in this section, what I'm really trying to tell you to do is, you know, you're going to pick products that you like and, and not put in the products, hopefully, that I just told you about. In the meantime, service, I mean, delivery, where your store is, you really should spend a good 30 minutes researching everything else that goes around the product that you're buying. Because at no time, have I seen um, stores going out of business, bad products being marketed, and it's something you really need to be aware of. Appliance extended warranties, I would say the same thing. You do need them on professional ranges and uh, refrigerators to some, in, to some standpoint. When I say that, the percentage of failure in the first year would say that it's a good bet that you, you, know, you would use and, and get service, but you're not gonna get any service um, for most people because they don't have any service. 
Um, so I would buy an extended warranty only from a service provider, whether it's a dealer or whether a dealer with a service department or a service only outfit. Someone that could, when you call, they could send a tech to you because most of the uh, extended warranties go through third parties with no tech. So it's really about you giving up and just calling someone and paying for the service after the fact. Okay. Um, combination washer dryers with heat pump, uh, the G ultra fast and the LG, they don't have a spiffy name for theirs. It's a WM6998 HBA. These are the newest thing where you put in your clothes, um, dirty, they come out dry and clean. It's a great idea. It actually operates at 110. It's ventless. You can put them anywhere except for one thing. The previous combos didn't work. We didn't sell them because what happens is they couldn't remove lint. And over time, that lint gets built up, reduced efficiency until it actually seizes the machine because it's full of lint, right? And it's an impossible service call. Now, both GE and LG have made special provisions for vent for uh, filtering. GE's got the um, filter right in the front. If you take a look at it, the little slot in the left-hand side. LG, it's on the top. But nobody, including me, and we service for a living, can tell you three to 10 years whether this will work or not. So if you look on the left, let's just say it doesn't work. You got to figure that the regular heat pump dryers will work in three to 10 years, that they're not combinations. So you're okay there. But I wouldn't build, because I know we have a lot of decorators, and this is for you, on this in this presentation. You do not want to build a laundry room like that around a proprietary appliance just yet. I'd wait a few years before you do that. Give yourself some leeway. Because, and, and again, check user reviews, but we're not sure whether this product in the long term is going to work or not. And that's the truth. And last, certainly not least, is a sobering statistic. We did about 37,500 service calls last year. Um, we sold 9% less appliances last year and serviced about 10% more. And as manufacturers figure out their supply chains, I think for the next couple of years, we're gonna have like more routine kind of annoying service calls as they figure out how everything gets put back together again. So that's just another thing you might want to consider before you're buying appliances. I know I've thrown a lot at you, but if we go over these three again, all three have venting issues. I don't know how to solve this one because they put a room behind it. So this is an, in, this is an inside wall. So what they should have done is put the room in front and then, you know, so they could vent through a back wall. Um, this one, you just change the sink and the, and the stove. You put the stove... You move the windows around, but you can't do that now. And this is a, this is a problem, right? And 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 I put this in specifically. Um, there's some pictures where you see these professional range tops with grills and with no venting, like this. And you're like, you wouldn't put your outside grill in your house, would you? And you know the the Wolf or Mila infrared grills. They're the same, they're almost the same sear burners as the Link Sear. So it is really the same as putting an outside grill inside your house. So I wouldn't do that. Really focus on your venting, put your sink and your stove top and your dishwasher together. And I think you're going to have a very functional kitchen you can enjoy. So with that, I'm going to say thank you for coming. Um, we have a lot of questions to answer. Next one, we actually get to create next uh our next webinar is on how to start your outside kitchen. You can really do anything, anything inside you can do now outside. If you live in, you know, if you live in New England, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, New Hampshire, and you feel like you want to see a store, um, you know, we have a QR code for that. And our, our, dying, our new appliance buyers buying guide, it's like our eighth iteration. I think it's up to about 90 pages of things to do and not to do. There's QR codes there. And Pat is going to send you all the stuff. So now we're going to answer questions and, and thank you very much for attending.